Um, hey, what's up, people? It's Jamil. And what I want to do is I want to go down a little bit on gang stalking, how you're going to be gang stalking. And for first and for, foremost, let me say that last night I talked to a woman um, from Michigan, uh, from the Detroit area. And she had been going through gang stalking since the 80s, since the 1980s. And I had never actually spoken to somebody who went that back that far. I've spoken to people who've been experiencing it for, for, you know, a few years, or, or there's people, I know there's people who've experienced it on the internet who say they've been going through it for 10 years. This woman's been doing it since the 1980s, and she was saying that her whole family's been targeted, and her brother was going through it in the 80s. He used to have two jobs in Detroit, um, going, this might have been going back to the late 70s, actually, but he would leave his job, and then this, one of the customers at the job, one of the people working at the job, would follow him to the bus stop and be at the same bus stop he was at before he even got there. And that's that's what you experience with gang stalking. You see people, and then those same people will be somewhere else and be somewhere else. And this is all meant to agitate you and disconnect you. And as I talked to her, we spoke for about an hour and a half, it made me really think, why are common everyday people who really don't have any political power? Uh, I mean, they do, but they don't. I'm talking about regular people who are like anybody else, why are they being targeted by a sophisticated system? And it, it brought up a good point. I think people are chosen in the gang stalking programs not because they're a threat to the government or it's political, but be, a lot of people are chosen because they're different. It may be, a lot of people talk about this has to do with DNA, but are people spiritually more awakened than others and are they targeted on a spiritual level? And I think that's what this is. I think this is spiritual. Now, me and her were talking about how they use fear, and then through that fear, it opens a portal to more fear and more fear, and that's what keeps you disconnected. As I grinded through the gang stalking program, I was able to not only beat the fear of the gang stalking program, but I was able to conquer other fears that I've had. And that the prime, arrow, the prime, the prime one was my fear of death. <laughs> and so I've just been going through it and going through it and going through it. And, I mean, it's a good feeling to, like, help people. People call me all the time. I just... I just connected with a new woman, um, professional woman from uh, New York City, a uh, very professional woman, and she's going through it, and now I'm helping her. Um, so I help all kinds of people. I have people from the corporate world, the professional world, coming to me for help. And I have people who, who are coming, you know, from, from just regular, just regular, every simple life, you know, simple life, and that, that's a great feeling. One of the tactics I want to tell you about, and this really helped me, is... <laughs> Face the program, face the gang stalking program, and then retreat and take a break. If it's only for an hour, if it's only for a day, if it's only for three days, it's worth it. I would go through a period where I was hiding inside my mother's house for a month. And this goes back to my story of how I got to the gang stalking program. Um, I, was, did, I was a conspiracy researcher for, for many years, many, pretty much my whole life I was into conspiracy. But it wasn't until about four years ago I started recording interviews with people and then about a year and a half ago, two years ago, it got really intense. I started going out and contacting people, doing interviews. I did inter a lot of interviews with some well-known people, um, celebrity-type people, uh, you know, people who are just, just really well-known, especially in the alternative conspiracy field. And so the interviews I had done, it had attracted the attention of the most powerful people in the world. And they knew what I was talking about in my conspiracy research because they were the people behind it. And so that led to a situation where I was put in a life-death situation um, in the Hollywood area. And this was, I was dealing with the Secret Society of Hollywood. They're worldwide secret societies, but specifically the elements in Hollywood. And uh, I was able to get through that. I was able to, to miraculously slip out of a life-death situation, beat that 110% no matter what. Then I kept running my mouth and going with it. I was passionate about conspiracy. I'm the only person I know that went as high as I did in conspiracy without actually working for the, for the, uh, people themselves and so you know I conquered the whole area of conspiracy now I'm over here conquering gang stuff the only person will ever be gang stuff in Jamil Rawls but uh so that's how I got put into it and then it went from that to gang stalking and so I was hiding inside my mother's house for a month and what I do is this I thought I was I thought it was a dead life death thing I would I'd look at the cars outside and stuff like that and, and, and all this and I'd go back sit down and meditate for a few hours go back look at it again and then eventually I ended up leaving the house and nothing happened I didn't die and it was you know I was scared man I was scared to death it got to the point to where eventually I was walking down the street at three in the morning with 
gang stalker was driving past me in the car and pretending like they were going to hit me. And I would be like, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I was talking to him and stuff. And I went from hiding in the house to that. And then and it just, it just snowballed. It just kept, things just kept getting more miraculous. And so that's what I do. You know, I don't do it anymore. I don't, there's no need for me to do it. I could be outside around it all my life now. And I wouldn't, you know, I would never have to retreat. And it would only make me better 110% no matter what. But for people just starting out, go outside, face the gang stalking you think. The people following you, uh, they use the headlights in broad daylight a lot. Um, you know, they pull out helicopters. Sometimes you get airplanes out next to an airport, so it gets pretty wild. And But you face whatever you face. If it's people around you saying stuff, whatever, just whatever it is, deal with it. You know what I mean? I know, I know a guy, he's been having people drive by him and flick him off. You know what I mean? I, I, know, I know a woman, she was poisoned with some sort of poison, and she was walking around like thinking she was going to die for three days, and that whole time people were walking around here whispering that stuff about cancer and stuff, trying to psych her out. She had her, you know, child taken from her and stuff like that. It was a real, it was, I mean, people go through some crazy stuff in the program, man. And what you got to do is face it, retreat. Face it, retreat. And then your retreat, that, that'll build up your psychological um, defense against it. And then pretty soon it'll get so strong, you won't even feel it. It won't even matter. Like, like I love the gang. I'm excited about the program now, to be honest with you. I'm excited to see what they're going to do. It's like, it's like, what are they going to do today? What are they going to do today? You know what I mean? And, and so that's what's up, man. And then spiritually, just everything you do, like what you do right here, counts. Like, I, I'm, I'm eating the right foods. I'm eating vegetables. I'm drinking, you know, lots of water. Um, protein drinks and stuff like that, like I'm working out outside. And the program is so cool. Though. Yesterday they had a girl, she looked just like a model. And when I say model, I'm not joking, man. She has some yoga pants on, some black leggings, and some, and some like fucking long, excuse my language, some long, pretty, beautiful blonde hair. And she, she was walking past my house. You know what I mean? I, I, I knew she was part of the program, man, but I was just like, man, I was just like, man, somebody is beautiful, you know, girl that damn beautiful, say something. And so I said, hey, how are you doing? She turned around, she looked kind of nervous. I'm like, I'm like, damn, she is, she, she is a model, you know what I mean? And so I'm like, I'm like, uh, I'm like, okay, are you friendly? And when I said that, you know, I mean, she was already down the street, she was walking away, and all the construction workers were making noise. But that's how you do it. You say, you know, are you friendly? And she'll say, oh, and then you start talking to him. And you know, and then you, I got, they got girls so beautiful, man. And it's crazy. You know, I mean, it'll make you feel, it'll make you feel a million times. You know, just, just, just watch the, how beautiful the girls are. Do the gang stalking. If you're, you know, if you're a guy, if you're into that stuff, but, so, face the program, and retreat, face the retreat, and I've gone through it, down south in Mississippi, um, you know, at Alabama, and that's where I first realized there was something wrong. I was in uh, Mississippi when it started, and I was eating at a hotel, and people were just looking at me, and I'm just like, okay, this is getting crazy, what's going on? And then before that, it actually started the capital, the capital of Mississippi, that's where they started watching me at. And, and then I went back to the hotel, got something to eat, and that's that's when people were watching me and stuff, and then it followed me. I came back to Michigan, it was going on, and then, you know, it goes on in California, it goes on in other Phoenix, it was going on, and so that's the simple strategy. You know, be polite to the people, wave at the people, don't don't turn it into a thing where it, you, it's you faces them. These are, this is a sophisticated program, and it's well financed. You're not going to be able to fight every single person who's coming towards you. Just be kind to them, be polite. You know, if you feel like it's a situation where you can't be kind of be polite, you know, just try to withdraw yourself. Don't lose your cool. You know, try to be a positive person. Try, try and be a leader. Show some leadership qualities. And so, for those of you who have been following me online for a long time, you know, you, you know as well as I do. You know, I've been in conspiracy research for many years. So now we're just branching out. We're helping people in different ways. Um, I'm taking my career within the conspiracy sector and moving it over <clears throat> into to, to this. And, you know, the funny thing is, is everything I did in the conspiracy stuff went to benefit me. You know, I talked a lot about um, extraterrestrials, and, uh, like, I, I, had, I had a pyramid. I still got it. I saw it in the garage earlier. I was going to bring it in, but I forgot to. And it's stuff like that that helped me the most. Being silly and being funny actually saved my life. Had I been wearing a suit and tried to explain things to people in, in a very, like, pragmatic way, it never would have worked. I would have ended up getting killed a long time ago. <clears throat> me being myself is the best thing that happened to me. You know what I mean? It's what got me through everything. So I just want to tell people that, man. Just, just keep grinding and contact me, email me. I get emails 24-7. I talk to people on the phone 24-7. I mean, you know, it's, it's wonderful. All right.